welcome to how to create a name tag in Photoshop. Uh, this is an introductory project that we do with all our digital photography and digital art classes. Uh, the basic idea is that you are going to learn how to type your name in Adobe Photoshop and then use imagery, uh, pictures that you have taken uh, in order to fill in your letters. So we need to start with a new document in Photoshop. So let's go to our start menu. We're going to look for all the Adobe products. We need to open Photoshop. All right, and we're going to create a letter size document. A letter size document is a standard piece of printer paper. It's eight and a half inches wide and 11 inches tall. Uh, usually when we go into Photoshop, there will be an option to create file new. Um, and sometimes they'll have a preset that says letter very clearly on it, although it doesn't always display in inches. The first time you open it, it may display in points or pixels, um, but you can always change it to inches so you can see what the equivalent measurement is. So here we are in a Photoshop. We're going to ask for a new document, file new, and it's going to open up this new document window. I see letter because it's under my recent items, but if you don't see letter, if you go to print, letter will be the first option there. So for the title of this, I'm going to put my last name in and call it name tag. Right? Whenever you're doing something for class, you always want to make sure your last name and in some cases your first name uh, are included so that we'll know that the work belongs to you. All right, so the background's going to be white. It's 300 pixels per inch, RGB color. All those things are default settings. They're there every time you do it. It's fine. So we're going to click OK and we're presented with a large um, empty white page. Okay. I'm going to adjust my workspace right now. It's in the wrong mode. I want to be in. Yeah, I want to be in Essentials. Why is it showing me a timeline? Let's reset the Essentials. There we go. So we're mostly concerned with our Layers window, which is down here. I'm going to click and drag to float that a little bit. I only have one layer right now, and it is a white background, solid white. What I need to do is use my Type tool. So let's go back to our instructions. Right, we need to press the letter T on the keyboard to activate the type tool or look for the letter T icon in the tools palette. That is the type tool, but if I press the letter T on my keyboard, there it is, it opens the type tool. Now, right now, if we just click one time, we'll establish a cursor. All right. Now I'm getting ready to start typing. Uh, I'm going to type my full name. I'm going to throw caps lock on. A-D-A-M, H-A-T-C-H-L, but it's not showing up. You might be wondering what the heck is going on here. Well, I can see the problem already. I am about to paint uh, white letters on a white background. If I highlight all my text with the cursor and change the color to black by clicking that box, then I can see my name. All right. Now I have a lot of choices. I can choose what font I want to use. Uh, maybe I want to use something that's a little more blocky. I might want it to be much larger. I can try 72 points. Um, I may want to click to insert a line break. You know, right now I'm uh, doing center line text. I could change it to let me select all with control A. So I can do a left align or a right align. But if you like center align, that's okay. I hit the check when I'm happy with what I have. Now I'm probably going to make it a little bigger. And one of the things that we're going to do is free transform this. If we hit press control T, not T, T so I gave us the type tool, control T gives us this stretchable resizing, they call it a bounding box in Photoshop or uh, any associated Adobe software. So I'm going to make that much larger, that's good. And I don't know that I'm in love with this font, so I'm going to double click the little T icon in my layers window. Maybe I want to try something different. Um, I'm actually a really big fan of a font called Impact because Impact, where is it? we haven't gotten alphabetically down to the eyes. there's Impact. Impact has enough room for all of my uh, letters to be nice and big and bold on the page. So I am going to save what I have so far. I've been working without a net. If I lost power or kicked the power strip or something, I'd lose my work in progress. So I'm going to Go ahead and save it right on the desktop or on my H drive, somewhere where I know I'll be able to find it. I'll just press save and save that file. Now the next step is we need to place an embedded image or drag and drop a picture from another location. 
Uh, if you have pictures on your phone or on your Google Drive that you want to use, um, you can always download those from Google Drive. I happen to have some floating in a folder. I have a pictures folder filled with all sorts of different stuff and I have some nice sky images from a vacation that I took. So I'm going to use those to fill in my Photoshop document. So I'm going to go to my floating window here and I'm going to take one of the pictures and try this one. And I am simply going to drag and drop and dump it onto the page. Now when it comes in, it's presenting with a giant X because Photoshop is allowing us to say, ooh, we didn't really want that picture, maybe it was the wrong one. I could press this little circle with the slash to cancel it, but instead I want to confirm that yes, this is the correct picture and uh, hit the check or press enter. Now that's supposed to happen. You guys might be wondering, well, my letters are being blocked. That's what happens when we do this. But when we press the check, there it is highlighted in the instructions. When we press the check, it comes in, all right, and our letters are right underneath. What we want to do is have the letters be filled with this photo. So we won't see the photo anywhere except inside the letters. And the whole trick with that is something called creating a clipping mask. It says right click on the layer where the name is and choose create clipping mask. Well, that's what we want to do in Photoshop. We have two new layers. We have our text layer and the image layer. Now the name of that is 10, 24, 16 because that's the date it was taken. I'm going to right click on this and ask for create clipping mask. And that makes it so that the picture only will appear inside of the letters. Now that's a really nice feature. If I had a bunch of pictures I wanted to use, I could press control T to transform my pictures and I can resize them and I could have multiple pictures inside each letter. That's something I could try if I wanted. Or you can press control T and have it be nice and big and you can have one picture run through all of your letters. That's really up to you. Now I'll show you some advanced things. I'm going to go ahead and again go to File Save to save the work in progress. One of the things that's nice to do is make sure the letters are more snugly, tightly packed. There's a lot of space both here and here, the spacing between the letters. If I double click the letter T on my type layer, it's going to give me other options under here, under the character window, it's under the little folder. I can ask, right now it's doing auto kerning, I could ask for maybe 60 point, uh, oh that's the, the spacing of the up and down, so I'll highlight that and I'll add a little more space. I like that, it's a little more tightly packed. Then there's the horizontal distance between the letters, that's called the kerning. I can pack those letters in so tight that they actually overlap. Now if I pack them in too much, they, you can't even read it anymore. I think something like that will work. They're nice and snugly packed. So I get to see more picture as I go. All right. Another way that you can do this is if you select the type tool again, my first name is a lot shorter than my last name, so I can afford to have these letters be slightly larger. Um, right now everything is at 146.73. I could probably take my text size for my first name, you take it up to 180. See, that's allowed to be a little larger uh, and it'll still kind of match up with what's going on in the photo underneath. You double click it, I feel like I have an unusual space between them. Oh, I just lost my H, let me do the H again. H, turn, type my name, there we go. Now it's looking pretty good and aligned. I'm pleased with that. I'm saving it. Control S. Then I also have some other features I can add to the text layer. I can add things like stroke weights, uh, beveling, embossing. Let me start with a drop shadow to show you guys what that looks like. Um, don't worry about what the features and the sliders give you, but if you click and drag on the, the, the picture itself, it will allow you to kind of position that drop shadow. All right, and that's adjusting the sliders. I can adjust my opacity and have the shadow be a little more solid. Right, maybe I want it to be closer, but a little less solid, maybe something like that. All right, now there's all these other features too. That's the drop shadow. I could try maybe an inner glow. Let me click on the word inner glow. All right, right now it's doing an inner glow of black, which is kind of dark. But if I change my color to red or 
purple or blue or green. You go the green inner glow. Now, depending on the size, I can certainly adjust that. Maybe I'll have a little bit of green inner glow. And maybe I want to stroke. That's a fun feature that gives us on either the inside, center, or outside, it gives us an outline color. Right now the outline color is turned to black. I can switch it to any other color that I want. Maybe I'll go with a nice violet color. All right. Uh, there's other features. There's bevel emboss. Makes it look kind of three-dimensional depending on how you slide it. So whatever you like, you can do. Just make sure that you save often. Okay. So in the end, I've got my white background, my name, and my photo. Now, if you want to do multiple photos, you can drag and drop or go to File, Place, Embedded, and search for other photos. Uh, let me go to my Pictures folder. I'll scroll down and find a picture. Here's an Oaken Cougar. Place that in there. Okay. If I want the Oaken Cougar to be clipped, all I have to do is right-click and ask it to create clipping mask. And now the Oaken Cougar is in front of my other picture. Okay. And if I decide I like that, but I don't want to see the glow or the stroke anymore, I can mix and match those by turning the eyeballs off and on. So whatever you decide to do, when you get to the point that you like what you have, you want to save this, and you'll want to print this. So I'm going to go to print. And the reason we want to print it, you guys are all going to be keeping three ring binders. And you want to choose the color draft printer. And that will update. There we go. And this will be the cover for your three ring binder. So I'm going to go ahead and fire that off to the printer. And then I can go back to Google Classroom. Now that I'm done, I think yeah, it says, yeah, save a PSD. Oh, they want us to save a JPEG. So let's go ahead and do save as. And we'll choose a JPEG file. So now we have actual name tag. Go ahead and add demo to that. All right. I always choose to max out the quality. All right. And we're done.